to class methods versus static methods lecture. So generally, there are three types of methods in a class, and they are regular methods, static methods, and class methods. Now, unlike regular methods, both static and class methods are decorators. So we have a regular method here, with its default parameter, of course, being self. And then we have our class method with a default parameter of CLS. And then lastly, we have our static method decorator, and it has no default parameter here. So the fundamental advantage of both static and class methods is that they can be called directly from a class or an instance. And I have a block here, which goes into a little bit more detail than this at lecture regarding the differences between class methods versus static methods. So you can check that out, and it's at holisticcoding.com slash class methods versus static methods. Okay, so hopping back into the Jupyter Notebook, we're going to create a class called Charity. I'm going to add all three of these different types of methods into our class. So class, charity, and then we'll have funds equals 40,000 as our class attributes, then def init as our constructor. At the moment, it's only going to have pass. And then we'll have king, it's going to be self, so it's going to be our regular method. And what we're going to do is have charity.funds equals charity.funds plus add. So every time that we call this king method, it's going to increment the initial value of 40,000 by whatever we add in here. Okay, so I'm going to have a print statement of print. I have given a total of plus string charity dot funds and then we'll have a class method decorator so with comparison it's going to be called queen and cls add and we'll have cls dot funds equals cls dot funds plus add print it's going to be essentially the same i also gave a total of dollars plus string cls.funds. All right, so what we're going to do now is create an instance. So g equals charity on that. And if I do g.funds, you can see I've got 40,000 here. Now, if I do g. let's say king, I put in 12,000 on that. You can see now it's 52,000. And again, if I check g.funds, it should be 52 which it is. And if I run this again, it's 64. And if I check the funds, it's 64 as well. If I do charity.funds, it's also 64,000 here. Okay, that's because we're altering or rather incrementing the value of the funds every time that we run the king method. And let's say, for instance, if I just comment that out, rerun this class, then recreate the instance G, you see it's 40,000 again. And we'll create a, another method in a moment that's going to be able to reset the value later on to 40,000. But let's say I want to call the king method directly from the class. So charity.king, and I'll do, let's say, 2,500. I get a type error here. So it's saying missing one required positional arguments, add. But if I were to change this to queen, which is our static method, run this, you can see it doesn't cause any error. So that's why we sometimes use the class method. All right, so to make things a little bit clearer here, I'm going to create another class method, which is essentially equivalent to the queen method, but with a slight variation. So we'll call this lady, and instead we'll have charity add, and we'll have charity.funds equals charity.funds plus add prints I gave a total of plus string charity.funds. All right, and if I run this, of course it's 4,000, but then if I change this to lady, and let's say I put in 7,000, if I run that, so now I have 47,000. So you can see that the CLS is essentially the same as the name of the charity, but this is just a generic term that's being used, so it makes it much more easier for anyone to read, and there's no ambiguity. So that's why we have CLS. All right, so 
let's say we create a, another method in here to reset the value of the funds class attribute back to 40,000 or any other value that we like. And we'll have, let's say, reset. And we'll do actually self reset self and then we'll have charity dot funds equals 40,000 and also we'll have the other two so these are going to be class reset CLS and of course what I have to have is the decorator at class method and then have CLS dot funds equals 40,000 and in fact, actually, I'll change this just to make it a bit more clearer. So I've made this 50,000. I'm going to make this 45,000. And I'm going to make the next one, so static method. That's going to be, let's say, static resets, no parameter. And this is going to be charity.funds equals 55,000, just to make the distinction a little bit clearer on the output. Okay, so you might be wondering what's the point in having these three different methods? Well, firstly, I just to demonstrate that you can generate the same outputs with either one of them, but let's just double check before we go into a little bit more detail here. So I'm going to create that and then I'm going to run the lady. So we've got 47,000 and I'm going to create some more cells here, so just hitting the A button there. And let's say I have charity dots, well, I'll do the instance instead, so I can do all, four, all three of them. All right, so let's say I want to reset the value, and I'll do just with the self first, run that, and now if I do G dot funds, it's 45,000. If I run this, charity.lady methods, it's 52,000, and I want to put this down to a different value. So let's say we have CLS, and this should be 50,000. So if I check the funds, it's 50,000. And if I run this again, it should be 57,000, which it is. And instead, I'm going to change this to static. Run that, and now I should have 55,000, which I do. All right, so why should we use any of them? Why should we use, for instance, the class method over the static method or the static method over the self method? Well, the reason being is because all you have to do is just look at what we're using. And what we're using is the funds, which is a class attributes. So that's a, a giveaway that we don't really need to use the regular self method. So it can really be just a case of choosing between the class method and the static method. So as I said before, we're not using directly the self regular method, we're using a class attribute here. So it makes more sense logically to use the class method when it comes to resetting the value of a class attributes. All right, so let's say we want to look at another example. So why else would we want to use a class method? Well, there's one example. Let's say we have in the init, we have self.donation, and it's going to be equal to donation. And also in here, of course, as well, donation. And here we'll have donation equal to zero. All right. so Let's say, for instance, donation is going to be a integer value, but the problem is with this particular parameter, we're receiving a string. So I'll just run that. And let's say we're having a string of, just delete that. Let's say it's donated equals, I donated a total of, let's say 15,000. Right, so we just want the integer value of 15,000. We don't want the string at all. So that's a bit of an issue. That means that we can't use this donated variable 
as an input for the parameter donation. So what we can do instead is we can actually create a class method. And what I'm gonna do is just show you the code inside here first before we put it in our charity class. So let's say we have We do donated dot splits on that, and then we do let's say minus one, and then after that I can simply do eval. Okay, and now I can actually put this in. So I'm going to use this for a particular method. So I'm actually just going to grab this. And I'm going to put it in a new method here. So we'll have, in fact, I'm actually going to remove these two. And we'll have, let's say, at class method def total funds CLS. CLS dot funds equals CLS dot funds plus CLS dot donation. So we know that the class attribute donation is equal to zero at the moment. And then we'll have print total money in our treasury is something dot formats. CLS dot funds and then we'll have at class method def from donor CLS donated it's going to be our variable which is the string that we're going to sort out and all I'm going to do is just paste this in here okay and then we'll have it equal to CLS dot donation all right, so instead of it being equal to zero, it's going to be equal to whatever string that we put in that contains a particular amount of money that is going to then be converted into an integer value that we can then put into our total funds method. All right, and then lastly, I'm going to have a static method here. So static methods, and it's going to be called allocates. And they'll have cause one, cause two, and percent. Scroll down here, and we'll have, let's say, funds equals, and this is going to be charity. So I can't use CLS in here because, of course, we're using a static method. And also note that you can't mix self and CLS in the same method, otherwise you'll cause an error. All right, so we'll have this equal to funds and we'll have total equal to 1.0 c1 equals total minus percent and c2 equals percent so percent is just going to be a decimal number and then we'll have print it's going to be the alternative way of formatting with Python 3.6 so the cause one cause charity will receive dollar sign funds times C1 and the cause should be in brackets or braces rather, receives dollars funds scroll here times C2. All right, so hopefully you can see all of that. So it says here the cause one charity will receive dollars funds C1, so it's multiplied by C1. And the cause two receives dollars funds times C2. All right, so that's that done. And what I'm going to do now is just 
instead of creating an instance, I'm going to directly call the function itself. So I'm going to remove all that, remove all this, just to make things a bit clearer. And let's say I have charity.tab, and the one that I want is from donor, and this is going to be our string. So I'm going to put in, run that, donated, donated in here, that should be fine. And then I'll do total, let's give me three charity dot total, and should run that. So total money in our treasury is 55,000, which makes sense because our funds was originally 40,000. So we've added on 15,000 here. Okay, and then if I were to do, that should be charity again, excuse me, dot allocates, and we'll have, let's say, I just hit tab, you can see I've got the three parameters here, so cause one, cause two, and percent for this static method. So we'll have, let's say, homeless, and we'll have animal, let's say, shelter. And we'll have a percentage of 0.4 on that. So the homeless charity will receive 33,000, and the animal shelter receives $22,000. Okay, so I could just change that as well to, say, five, so they get half and half. And let's say I want to instead change this to 20,000, run that. And now I run the from donor. Then I run this, so it's 75,000. And then I run this, as you can see it's equal in both counts. But let's say for instance, I just recreate this class here. And then I go to charity.funds, it's 40,000. So if I run the charity allocates, what's going to happen is that it should be fine. So it's just going to be 20,000 for both of them, as you can see here. And then if I run this from the from don't know, and then total funds, 60,000, it's gonna be 30,000 each. All right, so why would we be using this? Well, as I said before, the class method enables us to overcome the fact that because we have this string here as the variable donated, we can't put that in the constructor, which is our special method in it. So donation would take the donated string, but what it really needs is an integer value. And as a consequence, we have to ignore the creating of an instance and directly use the charity class to create our CLS donation. So of course it has a default value of zero. All right, so that concludes my lecture on using the class methods and static methods. I hope that's been insightful and please check out the blog for further information. Thanks.